Well, we've waited months for the government's heat and building strategy. It's important because homes account for around 15% of all of the UK's carbon emissions. And the idea is to incentivise people to move to electricity by making them pay more for using gas. But will this work and is it fair? Who should pay for greening our homes? David, to you first. I think we know a few things. The first is that this transition needs to happen. A recent study I, I saw suggested that actually twice as much emissions are coming from home heaters as are coming from all of the country's power emissions. We know that the country will be better off and prices will be cheaper in the medium and long term if we make this transition. And we know to this point that the prices that we have been paying don't reflect the true cost of burning these fuels. I think globally, the IMF believes that fossil fuels are being subsidized to the tr tune of five or six trillion dollars every year. Um, to me, the answer is quite clear that the government's role is to make sure that things that look appealing and attractive in the medium and long term can be afforded today. And I think for that reason, um, it's the government's role to be sure. Now, um, taxes can play a role there, but I'd like to see the UK government also doing more subsidy on the uptake end, on the electricity end, so that it's not just a, um, a stick approach, but also a carrot approach. So who should be paying for it? Governments? consumers or industry. Alice, 28% of homeowners in the UK don't plan to eco-upgrade their homes. Are tax incentives the answer? I mean, look, I can, I can speak from the perspective of someone through my work in, in photography and filmmaking who's been traveling to climate front lines, and I can completely understand for UK homeowners, this issue might feel distant, abstract, coming far down the line, but we really have an incredible amount of evidence. We've had it for decades. And if we needed any more, there have been historic flooding in Germany, historic wildfires across California. Um, I, I would ask what other choice we have than to lead this transition. And, and I would speak of our sort of massive responsibility to do so and to do so as quickly as possible. Um, you know, the rate of our, we are in the UK, the home of the Industrial Revolution, we began this sort of hugely uh, misguided fossil fuel experiment. Um, and now I really believe that it's our role to lead the transition out of it. Is it going to be easy to retrofit 29 million homes? Absolutely not. Um, but I would say that the cost of inaction far outweighs uh, the cost of action. And, and you know, as, right. as David says, and, and as he painted so powerfully in his book, this is literally talking about trillions of, of damage if we don't take action. And just briefly, David, before we move on, how does the US compare by comparison America, huge energy consumers, but also huge potential for renewables? Well, we're not doing nearly as well as the UK. Uh, we have a much smaller share of renewable power. Um, but we're on the brink, I hope, of making massive investments here to green our grid um, with, the, with the infrastructure and reconciliation bills that are being talked about right now. So we're, I would say we're lagging behind, um, but I, I hope that if we were talking a month from now, the picture would look a lot greener.